season, as you see at Temple. For the Bulls, Jose Fernandez dealing with some injuries, but working his team through some tough waters right now. 13 and 5 on the season, and the Bulls on the run. Betty Menunga, who left the game early against Tulsa with an injury, gets on the board immediately for USF. Jim Betty critical to this team functioning at a high level. We saw her lead the game with just seven rebounds. She's a player that averages 11.5 and also averages close to double figures for this team. Here is Jaysha Clinton, part of their freshman backcourt, and it doesn't take long for Davis, but she misses from three, and the Bulls have the rebound. Pins on, good to see her leading the break for the Bulls, trying to go in, but great defense there by Temple intercepting that pass. Anaya Gordine with the steal, and Davis in transition. Davis. That gives her 2,100 career points, second all-time at Temple as you look at the Bulls starting five for this one. Good to see Pinson not holding the ball too long in that dribble. Something Coach Fernandez has talked about with this team is don't let the ball get stuck with the guards. Chris passes with a purpose. Menungo with a rare three, and Mayo pulls down the rebound. Temple's going to run on the Bulls and try and push the pace a little bit. They might know the Bulls a little bit beat up here and want to test the conditioning of the Bulls. Jaysha Clinton doesn't draw iron, and that'll be South Florida basketball. Temple 8-6 and six overall. They're 3-0 and oh in the league. And they've had a few postponed games, too, as a lot of teams are suffering through still this third year almost of the pandemic, but they have managed to really put on a show early in the conference season. Menunga to the basket off the glass, and she'll have a chance at a three-point play, so Betty Menunga who only scored two points last time out against Tulsa with a quick four here. And something Betty Menunga can do, she can go hard to the hoop. She's really good at the elbow shot there, but ball fake, strong, and finishing. That's something this team's going to have to do this afternoon, finish the shots. And Menunga completes the three-point play. It's good to see Betty out here. You know, Jim, she's somebody who... Plays, makes that inside out game possible. She does a nice high low game with Dulce Meningiadu for the Bulls. So she's got to stay on the floor, stay out of foul trouble, and stay healthy. Davis going to the baseline. The jump hook is short, but a second chance for Temple, and Davis able to get the put back. Davis. Something you'd expect to see from the preseason player of the year selection in the American Conference. Fights on the board. She stands only six feet tall, Jim, but she is a ton on the board. Leads the league in points, minutes, and field goal percentage. Strong defense there by the Owls. Tulsi doing a nice job pinning her player low. She's got to finish that, though. That's something Coach Fernandez has talked to her about. You've got to finish that shot once you get your player pinned. But again, Temple, great job on the help side. Here is Davis. See her testing, testing Mendiadu's ability to stay with her. Davis, again, a little smaller. Nice outlet pass. But Mengiato not able to finish. She will go to the free throw line. Let's take a look at our series history. It's brought to you by Florida Blue. Bulls have had a lot of success against the Owls over the years. They played only once last year in Philadelphia. They will play twice this season with the Bulls returning this game in February. Jim, that game last season, you might recall, Bulls fans and uh, Temple Owl fans might recall, it took the Bulls a 21-point fourth quarter in order to seal that victory. Bulls really out-rebounded the Owls in that quarter and were able to escape with the win. One out of two for Franca Mengiato. Bulls meeting out the Owls up top. Necky is going to play very tight defense here on Gordine and try and get around that screen. She likes to draw a foul on the drive every time. Out of bounds, and that will be South Florida basketball. Now the Bulls, as we mentioned, fighting through some injuries. We don't expect to see Maria Alvarez in this game after being injured against Tulsa last time. A difficult collision for her in that game. She came immediately out 
early in the game, and we have not seen her since. She's dressed in street clothes now on the bench. That'll be a foul on Menunga on the offensive oh, rebound oh, attempt. A good battle developing down low right now between the senior Alexa Williamson for Temple and Betty Menunga, both very athletic players, and Williamson's guarding Menunga on the offensive end. Bulls have only attempted one three-point shot in the early going. Temple, one of the best teams in the nation at defending the three. And you know, the Bulls have struggled recently from the three-point line, not shooting above 26% in the last four games, hitting as low as 23%. Uh, that's something Coach Fernandez wants to see. They have a very good inside-out game when the Bulls are hitting from the three-point line. It definitely opens up the center for Men Menjiadu and Menunga. Three on the shot clock as Temple inbounds. And they got a player free. That's Alexa Williamson, who has really got it going in conference play. She averages 10 a game, but it's been 15 a game for her in league play. So she has great lift off that, that low post move. So she can get up off the floor. Again, a good matchup for Menunga. See Temple trying to trap up top and leaves Pinzon free. Good ball movement, and Elisa Pinzon puts USF back ahead. Really nice crisp passes inside out, allowing Pinzon to have a wide open look at the three. Good finish by her. Great move by Williamson. Can't get the shot to fall, but hustling for the offensive rebound. And again, offensive work on the boards. That was Mia Davis and the foul called on USF. Good to see Elisa Pinzon connect from long range. Good inside out play here, finding Pinzon on the wing and really nice for Coach Fernandez to see her hit. She has not had a bucket in the last couple of games. So it's good to see her get in gear and get that in stride. Something that the Bulls need to do is pass inside out, crisp passes, and not a lot of dribbling. Forcing the Owls to switch, forcing the Owls to have their help side defense come into play. That was a big foul call on the Bulls. It was the second on Menunga. You saw Shea Leverett check in. And this is a familiar location for Mia Davis. She has shot more free throws than any player in Temple basketball history, and she got two there. And that was on an offensive board. Bulls have to get a body on her and keep her off the glass. She is a tremendous rebounder and has over 1,000 rebounds in her career at Temple. Midway through the first quarter. And Jadu calling for the basketball from Pinzon. Pinzon did not have a great angle to get it into her, but Dulcie's looking for the ball on the inside. And the takeaway by Williamson. Temple looking for the lead here. Taking their time, setting up their play, showing a lot of patience here against a Bulls team that definitely wants to get out and run on them. Williamson with the runner. Alexa Williamson. She's hit a couple of nice shots down low. She has great lift off of the floor, uses the backboard really well. All young close players, Jim, should take a look at that one. Williamson and Davis have combined for all 10 for Temple. Pinzon looking inside. There's the entry pass. Then Jadu get to finish really on those post moves. She's getting good position down low. Guards are looking for her, but she has yet to really complete the shots. One point Temple lead. Last home game for a bit for the Bulls. They go back on the road for a swing through Texas. Two games coming up, and that'll be an offensive foul on Jaysha Clinton. Nice job by Harvey to get the offensive foul. It'll be Bulls basketball when we return. In the first quarter, and the Bulls down one. A little more on Mia Davis. We talked about the points. Those are amazing enough, but don't forget about the rebounds. How rare is it to have a player in the 2000s and the 1000s in those categories? Can't be many of them around the nation. And only stands at six feet tall, three-time all-conference first team player, and of course the player of the year, preseason player of the year selection uh, by the coaches. So. 
Uh, she's she's a tremendous player, but really as she goes, the Temple Owls go. And right now, the name of the game for Temple is offensive rebounds. They have led to second chance points, and that's been the difference early. Cheneke winds up on the deck, but hits the three. Good to see that coming off a three for six performance in the Tulsa win from the three point line. Cheneke continuing to keep that momentum going, and of course, that. Tulsa game, 30-point game, Jim, followed up on a 12-point fourth quarter at UCF where the Bulls attempted to mount a comeback. She may have been just inside the arc. They've put two on the board. There's offensive work again for Mia Davis as Temple just really outworking USF on the boards right now. Five offensive rebounds for Temple, none for the Bulls. Remember, Menunga on the bench with two fouls. Bermejo's three is short, and that'll kick out of bounds. Let's check Elena Cheneke's feet here. Looks like on the line. That's why that went for two. Just on the line, but I think the, the Bulls will take it at, at this point. They're struggling to keep the Temple Owls off Temple's own glass. So they've got to turn around and box out. Bermejo with the block, but she'll be whistled for the foul and Davis to the free throw line. So now critical moments for Christina Bermejo. Jose Fernandez was really pleased when Bermejo came in for Menunga, second half against Tulsa, had a career-high nine rebounds. Going to have to do that again with Menunga out for a while with foul trouble, but they're going to bring in Patience Williams to replace her. You're right, Bermejo really sparked that Tulsa ending of the game where the Bulls were able to grab that victory. She had two great defensive plays, blocking Wybette Mayberry from scoring, and she was able to get back. She was able to put up a few points when she had open looks, but her rebounding, nine rebounds, and great defensive effort really assisted the Bulls in that Tulsa win. Quick ten points for Mia Davis, including four or four from the free throw line. I think we could be saying that a lot, as you mentioned. She's uh, got quite the skill at getting herself to the line. Pins on with the left hand, and there's some offensive rebounding by the Bulls, but Leverett can't get the follow. And Williamson beats the Bulls down court. Temple on a run here, their biggest lead of the game. Open look for Harvey. And the Bulls trying to keep that alive, slept it out of bounds. And it will be South Florida basketball. And how about Temple pushing the ball down the floor, challenging the Bulls. And great look by Williamson beating Shea Leverett down the court. So that's something the Bulls are going to have to watch out for. Williamson does a great job at releasing as the 4-5 player. She releases quickly on the break for Temple. They have their heads up. They're finding her. Cheneke cut off at the baseline. Temple doing a nice job shutting Chineke down from driving in the lane, which Chineke had done so successfully against Tulsa. Harvey can't get the shot to fall. He's having a little bit of trouble finishing on their on their shots. We've seen Dulce, Benjadu have issues there. Harvey had issues. Shea Leverett had issues with the, her prior layup. So something the Bulls are going to have to pay attention to is actually finishing that shot. Bulls have missed their last five from the floor. This is going to be an offensive foul on Tierra East, freshman out of Louisville. See, the Bulls started out shooting well, have struggled a little bit in the last few minutes. Yeah, shooting just one for seven in the last few minutes, but Sydney Harvey also in this first period has taken two charges. So at least on the defensive end, Harvey appears to be trying to shut Temple down. Six to nothing Temple run. Pins on with an open look. Oh, and oh, Leverett keeps it alive. Good effort there by Shea Leverett to keep that ball alive. And the whistles before Cheneke launched that one from the corner. You see, Jim, that the Temple Owls are doing a great job packing the lane, making it difficult for Cheneke to find any daylight. Cheneke, a very crafty player for the Bulls. She can has great body control and can usually get off a nice layup, but she's not seeing any daylight in the lane. It's like Imani Mayo may have gotten hit in the eye. And they're going to get her to the sidelines.
Jose Fernandez trying to get his team back to the postseason, preseason favorite in the conference. Injuries and illness have made it a little bit tougher than some people may have expected. That one blocked out of bounds. It'll go back to USF with eight to shoot. Seneke again continuing to try to get herself into the lane, maybe draw fouls on Temple, get herself to the free throw line, but she's not seen any daylight. Great defense by Temple, really good help side to come over and block. And another nice diagram play coming on the out of bounds, but Harvey is unable to drop it in. And South Florida comes up empty again. Well, a few cold looks here for the Bulls. The, the lid just on the bucket. They've had good looks. They've run their plays. They've been patient in their offense. Just shots not falling. Bulls have now missed their last eight shots. They'll have one more chance before the quarter expires. He's on pushing, probing, looking for anyone to run with her on the break. Really just no one there. Cheneke stops and pops. And Temple with the ball. East shot will be short, and that's how the first quarter will end. The Bulls go just four of 17. Finish, and she did a great job at the free throw line. Of course, she ended her career with 50 double doubles. At one point, one year, she led the American Athletic Conference in rebounds per game at 11.4. And currently, I think she's enjoying some great success playing professional basketball over in Europe. Getting started in the second quarter, Temple by five. Mihaila Lasic in the game now defensively for the Bulls. Here comes Davis. And a nice job to hang in defensively by Fanka Mengiato. And Davis got tangled up with her coming up court. And I think they're going to get Davis with a foul. So no indications yet here. They are talking to both head coaches, but I think they're just going to have that be a garden variety foul there. So. Yeah, you know, when we saw that from the other perspective and the other view, it did just kind of look like a tangle, uh, everyone trying to get up. But you see, I mentioned Coach Cardoza might not take Mia Davis out. She has actually pulled her out uh, to take a few minutes here. Here is Cheneke. Franca Mengiato tries to power it up and can't do so. Mengiato having difficulty really finishing her shot. She's getting great position down low, getting her player pinned on her back, making great post moves, just difficulty finishing. Williamson oh. with the acrobatic effort pins on the rebound. Cheneke through traffic, open three. And the Bulls just can't buy one from long range right now. They've had some great looks. A good break there by Pinzon, throwing it down the court. Not a lot of dribbling. Chinecki taking it in, doing the inside-out game, just not able to finish. Patience Williams with the block. But again, offensive rebounds. East gets a second chance and now a third chance. And this one will go to South Florida. This is something South Florida is known for, actually, is taking control of the boards and owning the boards in their games, but having difficulty keeping Temple, a very aggressive team, from getting to the glass. You see Bermejo re-entering, replacing Patience Williams, who had that block. And she's hobbling a little bit as she comes off the court. Benunga went out with two fouls in the first quarter, has not returned. Temple playing very tight defense on Chineke, trying to keep her from shooting outside, but then a lot of help on her as well. And just trying to dribble through traffic. She turns it over. The Bulls are scoreless for the last five minutes. Still trailing by five here, early second quarter. Here's Gordeen. And a nice drive to the basket by Anaya Gordine, freshman, averaging seven a game for the Owls. Great move there, good hesitation. Made Chinecki stand up in her defensive stance and then went hard to the hoop and importantly finished the shot. Bulls having a hard time finding points. Again, aggressive defense. Gordine almost took it away and then Harvey is blocked. It will go back to South Florida. Pereira, the sophomore, six foot two, the great block there. She's a transfer from George Washington. 
Ferrer doing a nice job sliding with Sydney Harvey and reaching over, preventing the, the contact. No body-to-body -body contact using her length to get that ball out of bounds. Sarah Guerrero in the game, her first touch. Now Lossich running out of time on the shot clock. Off in time, and Lossich hits one from just inside the arc. A great shot by Lossich, but again, not really the shot the Bulls are looking for in their offense. So good save, uh, but something I'm sure Coach Hernandez is going to talk about. That's not the exact shot that they want in that set. Bulls have brought Manunga back. She'll have to be careful with the two fouls, but right now she doesn't have Davis to contend with defensively. Gordine over Lossich. And the Bulls with a chance to get a little closer. Much better job by the Bulls. They're blocking out the Owls. Nunga back in the game, making a huge difference on the boards already. Bulls just looking for some offensive spark here. Harvey around the screen. Menunga. And Lossage has it kicked away. Turnover Bulls. Nice pick there by Dulce Menjiadu. Lossich using the screen, but losing the handle. Mangiadu had a nice job rolling to the hoop. Five-point Owls lead. Perea over Menunga leaves it short. And USF with another chance. Harvey on the run. No whistle. And East with the rebound. Officials letting them play. Bulls need to understand that and take the contact, not look for the contact to get to the free throw line. Look for the contact in finishing the shot. Bulls 3-1 and one in conference play. Temple 3-0. and oh. Great defense there by Lossage. Sliding, sliding with the driving. And Lonnie Mayo doing a nice job cutting her off, going straight up, not getting the foul. Lossich has seen an increase in minutes lately with Alvarez out and Harvey not full speed at times. She's made some critical plays today. Yeah, she played not over nine minutes in that win against Tulsa, hit a shot, went one for two, and played great defense on why that may vary. In fact, Coach Fernandez was substituting her in with pins on offense defense. Williamson with a drive to the basket, make it Gordeen instead with a hoop. It's a couple drives there by Gordeen. Bulls having difficulty cutting her off. She's seen her way right to the hoop. Seven point lead for the Owls. Menunga just powers her way in. Betty Menunga leads USF with seven. Two great matchups there in the number 20s. Uh, both athletic players. It's going to be very interesting to watch how Williamson's handles Manunga's speed, which is quite similar to her own speed. This is Jalen Holmes in the game for the first time. Now Mayo, who has returned after being shaken up earlier. Gordine to the basket, and she'll get free throws. So Temple will go to the line when we return the Owls with a five-point lead. Hard work, sure. Guesswork, uh, no. Davis has been sidelined with foul trouble, but she's still the leading scorer. That's it for Temple. That's their 20 points, three players, but it's been enough to this point. It certainly has Alexa Williamson really impressive right now with her athletic ability, her matchup with Betty Menunga. She is second on the team in scoring with 10 and a half a game. And then the freshman, the five foot nine, Anaya Gordine doing a nice job taking the ball to the hoop and finding her way to some open shots. Great free throw shooter too, Gordine at 87% coming in. She's giving the Temple Owls really good guard play. She's done an excellent job this season and it's just started about six games, but she's working her way into that starting lineup being more consistent in that position. Temple matches their biggest lead at seven points. This is Ariel Wilson in the game for the first time. And I think Fanka Mengiato was held there as the Bulls tried to get that ball inside. Shante Taylor having difficulty getting around Mengiato. That's something uh, Dulce Mengiato is so good at is getting her defender pinned on her backside, pushing her down the lane low 
getting great position. Guerrero with the quick shot. Did you see Sarah Guerrero hit? She had some minutes against Tulsa, Jim. She didn't hit either the two shots that she took. So nice to see her get on the board early. For the first time tonight, her first two points, five-point margin. Temple very patient here, looking inside, looking to go at Manunga, who's got those sitting on those two fouls. And there it is inside to Taylor, and she's called for travel. It's great to see Taylor on the floor, though. She has missed almost two full seasons with injury. Didn't play last year, played only five games two years ago. And back on the court now in her graduate year for the Owls. She will have her hands full this afternoon with Menjiadu. Here's Guerrero again. Off the glass, and she's got two in a row. Good look for Guerrero. You and I watched her warm up, and we thought her shot looked really good this afternoon in warming up. We saw her hit upwards of 12 in a row. Yeah, especially from inside the arc, and that's where two of her hoops have come in this game so far. Big contribution off the bench as South Florida back to within three, and Mayo with a miscommunication with Holmes turns it over. And South Florida will have the basketball. Looking at Guerrero coming around off that pick. Good lift off the floor, up and over, making sure it goes in using the backboard. A lot of minutes for Lasich in this first half for USF. Needs some help now. Here's Guerrero. A lot of passing by the Bulls here. They need to look, take that open shot. Sometimes you can pass too much. Fanka Mengiato can't connect. Bulls keep it alive. And we'll see if that was a foul or a shot clock violation. Both things happened right at the same time. Shot clock does read zero. You heard the buzzer, but the Bulls are hoping the foul came first. If this they may have to look. look yeah. yeah, they may have to match up the video for the shot clock and the foul call. Yeah, Bulls doing a nice job passing the ball. There is, though, that time when you can pass the ball a little bit too much. They usually do a nice job at crisp. Only two out of three from the line so far in this game. We're in the final minute of the first half. South Florida has trailed most of the way against Temple, but a chance to... Close in a little bit here. Mengiato is 71% from the free throw line. You know, you have to appreciate how, how great her free throw stroke is. I mean, she stands at 6'4", so a very tall player, but does a great job from the line. Former Memphis Tiger transferring to USF for her final year. And she makes it a one-point game. Temple looking for that outside shot. Yep, see if they could get a quick one. Yeah, they I left a little bit of room on Gordine, and she took advantage of it immediately. Yeah, and Aya Gordine now with eight. Lossage going under that screen. That's not against Gordine. She's got to go over the screen to stay on her. Bermejo with a nifty move to the basket. Christina Bermejo coming off that seven-point game on the board in this one to make it a one-point margin. Mentioned she's been giving this team some very good minutes both defensively and offensively And the Bulls now with a chance to grab the lead as we approach two minutes remaining and an unforced error as Lasich Led Guerrero a little too far It's hard to be upset with that play Bulls trying to get the break going Guerrero doing a nice job running down the right alley Good cross-court look just a tinge too far so the Bulls with the turnover, that is their fifth of the half. Here's Williamson. And again, nice work defensively by Fanka Mengiato, and this will be a foul on Temple. They're going to get Williamson trying to pry that ball away. Yeah, a little bit of a frustration foul there by Williamson. She's important to this team. We had that graphic coming back where she had scored six points, so one of the leading scorers for the team. She can't have that situation where she fouls very, very far from the defenseman. 
If you're Temple, though, with Mia Davis on the bench for this long, you've got to feel pretty good about where this game stands. For sure, like you've escaped, really, like you've escaped any sort of run by USF. USF unable to take advantage of Davis on the bench. Guerrero will earn free throws. One noticeable difference since the media timeout, the Bulls are doing a nice job at, at probing that center of the Temple defense and trying to draw contact and get the foul called. You've seen all the guards now really attacking Temple. Only Guerrero's second free throw of the season. She's got five points now. Looking comfortable out there. It's good to see her looking comfortable out there. She hasn't had a lot of minutes at any one time, so it's nice to see her. That's 10 points off the USF bench in this first half. And the Bulls back up one. Gordine has really picked up the slack for Mia Davis on the bench with foul trouble. Now Mayo. And Gordine with the three. Bulls on the run. Nice job by Gordine yeah, to force Guerrero outside and toward the sideline, slow down that transition. Yeah, Tim doing a nice job meeting the dribbler at half court. Vlasic, direct in traffic, Bulls running out of time, and that's a five-second call. Or is it? No, it's going to be a foul on Temple. How about that? Yeah, a little bailout call there. Gordine. Gordine, yeah. Her first personal. So it looked like when the Bulls were about to turn it over, they were also getting into trouble on the shot clock, and instead they're going to get free throws. Mihailo Vlasic will go to the line. You can see a very different lineup out there for the Bulls right now with Losich, Bermejo, Guerrera, Wilson, and Menjiadu. So it, you could see a low shot clock there because I think there was some confusion in the guard level as to who's who's doing what. Losich has struggled from the line this year. She's under 50% and didn't get either one of those. Final minute of the first half. A defensive battle. Ah, you see Lassage go over the screen, but then under the screen right there, giving Gordine a little bit of daylight. Gordine with that quick release. And Temple with a second opportunity. Gordine running a little clock here. They can't go for the final shot of the half. There's about a two-second difference. And a whistle before the shot. This is going to be on Guero. Mikhailo Walid had the basketball for Temple, and she has been fouled. Walid will check out now. Guerrero with her first foul. You see the time remaining in the first half as Temple inbounds. And Williamson lost the handle. The Bulls will have a little under five seconds to work with. A little bit of a gift there to the Bulls with William Williams looking to go to the hoop before she actually caught the basketball. Uh, she was definitely had Dulce out on her. I think she was intending to drive on her, see if she could either get a foul or get a quick shot. Bulls will have to hurry here. They're going to run out of time. And that's how the first half will end. A hard-fought defensive battle in the first half between the Bulls. Look at Williamson. Maybe get Alexa Williamson in some foul trouble. And that can only be done if the Bulls continue to probe and go at Temple in the lane. Bulls will start with the basketball, and we will keep an eye on Mia Davis. There have been very few times in her career where she has sat for 10 full minutes. That was the case, though, in the first half because of foul trouble. Back on the court to start the second half for the Owls. And Eliza Pinzon back for the Bulls. USF going right down low. No whistle, and a poop for Dulce Fankum Mengiadu. That's what they needed to do, finish. Go in low. Dulce had great position, nice pivot, and strong move to the hoop. But importantly for the Bulls, finishing that shot. Temple didn't score in the last 245 of the first half. They get the offense rekindled here. Again, only three Owls have scored in this game. Davis is one of them, but she leaves that short. And the Bulls on the attack. 
Menunga off the pass from Pinzon. That is Bulls basketball. A nice block out on the defensive end. Quick outlet to Pinzon. Pinzon not taking many dribbles, getting it down to a blind down the court, Betty Menunga. Pinzon third all time in assists at USF. Sees the floor so well. Does and a great job. Now up the, five. I was say to him, one of the leaders in the conference uh, in assists as well, consistently over the last two years. Davis comes up empty. Harvey's three. And it will be out of bounds. It will go back to the Temple Owls. Dolce with a great rebound. Outlet to Pinzon. Pinzon just taking a few dribbles, waiting for Manunga as she flies down the court, fills the lane, and finishes the shot. Five point USF lead here, early third quarter. Going right towards their star, Mia Davis. Mia Davis having a difficult time finishing, and Menunga staying aggressive. And a foul on Menunga. That's going to be her third. Williamson was able to get that ball away, and she'll get free throws. Davis has missed her first three shots of the half, but a damaging foul for USF. A uh, huge foul for USF. That's somewhere where Menunga struggled a little bit on that overly aggressive uh, second shot that sometimes teams get. That's where she draws what would be called maybe silly fouls by the coaching staff. She did such a great job on Mia Davis. Didn't let contact happen, didn't draw a foul, but then turns around on kind of a silly foul and puts Williamson at the line. One out of two, Williamson now with seven points. Looks like Coach Hernandez is going to keep Monunga in, uh, let her maybe play through it, see if she can avoid the contact. She's a very smart basketball player, so she should be able to uh, know her importance to this team. Inside it goes, Fanka Mengiato. Oh, what a block by Williamson. Bulls get it back. No shot clock reset, five to shoot. And too many passes for the Bulls. That's gonna be a shot clock violation. Again, Coach Fernandez on the sideline imploring his team to shoot the ball. Uh, it's great to pass, it's great to find your teammate, but when you're open in Coach Fernandez's offense, it's intentional and you gotta shoot. So the Bulls turn it over. Williamson can't quite pull it down, but it's touched last by the Bulls. It'll be Temple basketball. Good help side there by Menunga to cover Williamson, make that pass a lot more difficult to catch. Great work on the boards, but Mayo can't finish. Now Williamson, and finally USF pulls that ball out of there. Oh, the Owls have been tough on the boards. Open look, Cheneke. And the Bulls, for just the second time in this game, connect from three. And it's on this fast break. You've seen the Bulls pick up their momentum, try and get the break going. A huge adjustment there at halftime by the Bulls. Pins on getting the outlet quickly and pushing the ball up the floor. Biggest lead of the game for South Florida at seven points. Williamson, and that'll be a foul. She'll have a chance for a three-point play. I think they're going to get Franca Mengiato on this. And Williamson doing the exact same thing that Dulce has done to her, pinning her low. Good look here by Davis. Williamson getting great position, pinning Dulce Mengiato very low. Dulce just not getting around to intercept that pass. Williamson 67% from the free throw line. And she has the three-point play. Williamson now in double figures. On, maybe slowing it up a little bit. Going to try and run a set play, see if they can get a good open shot here. Cheneke to the basket. And Gordine with a rebound. Good job by the Bulls stopping that entry pass into Williamson. Cheneke picked her up and then switched off quickly to Mengiadu. Temple team has run off three conference wins in a row. Davis draws the foul. They're going to get Cheneke for that, and that's probably a good way for that one to go for USF. That's just her first. And two all-conference players there going at each other. Mia Davis was going to get into that lane somehow, some way. Great, strong dribbles, taking Cheneke in and then just going up hard. 
first miss for Davis, who was four for four. Temple at one point had four out of five games canceled, two conference games, which they hope to play eventually, and two non-conference games, which are probably not going to be made up. That's such an interruption to the teams this year, you know, just chemistry-wise, not only conditioning-wise, it's difficult to replicate game speed in practice, but just chemistry-wise on the floor. Well, a real credit to Tanya Cardosa and her team for coming back and winning three in a row in conference play after that long break. Cardosa in her 14th year with the Owls. Out of bounds play for the Bulls. Nice job defensively by Temple, double teaming Menunga in the paint, forcing the Bulls to start over. Running out of time on the shot clock. Fankum Mengiato off a nice pass from Pinzon. Difficult catch, and she made it and beat the shot clock for the Bulls. And great no-look pass by Pinzon. That's her court vision. Good cut by Dulce and nice, strong finish. Again, the Bulls are in a much better job this half finishing those tough shots. Davis gets matched up on Manunga, and Betty had to be careful there. Davis able to drop it in. That is a defensive matchup the Bulls don't right, want do right want, now. Yeah. Uh, you see Chinecki trying to take Davis whenever she can on the defensive end to get Menunga off of her. Chinecki creates a little space and drops it in, coming off a 30-point game. She's got seven today. Both teams seem to be kind of heating it up. You can see the pace picking up a little bit as the game wears on. Timeout taken. We're midway through the third quarter. To players from all over the world contributing to USF women's basketball. The United Nations so team here, and they all come together, and Coach Fernandez and his staff have done such a great job at molding them and meshing them together, and you see the result, success. Success for this USF program. So credit to the players, a credit to the coaching staff for taking players from all across the globe and turning them into a successful NCAA team. Conference championship last year, both regular season and tournament. The preseason number one this year. Elsie mm -hmm. Fankum Mengiato is going to get a foul there. That will be her second, and that takes us right back to break. Bulls by five over Temple. A new home and new projects go hand in hand. With the Home Depot app, you'll pick. South Florida has built a five-point lead in this third quarter, thanks in part to Elena Chineke, who's starting to heat up today, coming after her 30-point game earlier in the week. Uh, five points already this quarter, and you're right, in playing 37 minutes against Tulsa, 10 of 24 from the floor, 3 of 6 from 3, 7 of 8 from three-point line for 30 points. She was huge in that game, Alexa and the reason that the Bulls won. Another terrific play by Alexa Williamson. She's got 12. And Temple stays close. Bulls are having difficulty kind of shutting down Temple and pulling away from them. They had a great start to the quarter. Chineke with an open look. And the Bulls battle for the rebound. Come out with a loose ball. Pins on from three. And Williamson fouled by Guerrero on the rebound. Coach Fernandez and the fa fans here at the England Center not happy with that call. But how about USF battling Temple for the offensive glass? Temple still doing a great job in that category on their own end with 12 rebounds. Bulls just with seven on the offensive glass. And the fouls starting to add up on South Florida a little bit. Three on Menunga, two on Guerrero, and two on Mengiado. And free throws coming up for Williamson, who has been a key player for Temple today. 12 points, five boards. Came in as the second leading scorer with 10 and a half, averaging 10 and a half points a game and five rebounds. So she's had a tremendous performance and definitely been that kind of bridge when Mia Davis was out in the first half. She's the one that really made sure Temple stayed within, within range. Well, she's been terrific in conference play, averaging almost 15 per game in the three league wins Temple had. And another good job by her today. Back to a two-point margin. 
Anunga in a double team. Pins on another open look, and Aliza pins on. Increases the Bulls' lead. A much-needed three for the Bulls. Again, to try and keep Temple at a slight distance at least. But Manunga, something you don't want to see her do is bring that ball down in the lane. Temple's defense is just collapsing on her. When you bring the ball down as a post player, you become the size of a guard. Davis with the jumper. That's her range right there. She likes that elbow, kind of two steps out from the elbow range. She's hit many shots from there in her career. What's amazing about Davis's stat sheet at almost 19 points per game, she's only hit three three-pointers this entire year. Whew, it's a lot of tough work there. Pins on, looks like she's mostly intent on drawing the foul there, and she does on Williamson. And right here, dishing it out, inside out game to Pinzon, hitting that three. That's what the Bulls need to do to be successful. Have a strong inside game, a strong outside game. Quick passes, quick squ shots, square up, make it. The foul on Williamson, so Pinzon to the free throw line, 84% free throw shooter. Had a very quiet offensive game earlier in the week against Tulsa, but then you look at the stat sheet and she had six or seven rebounds and six or seven assists, and you realize she was still doing a lot of great things out there even though she wasn't scoring. Yeah, she's still a critical piece to South Florida's success. She is Coach Fernandez on the floor, and when she's on the floor, the team functions more smoothly. She's got eight points on the day. Here's the matchup South Florida needs to be concerned about. Davis and Manunga. Boyd Manunga picking up a needless extra foul here. Manunga playing with three. Williamson forced that one up. And the Bulls come away with the ball. See Pinzon calling for Manunga to come high. Manunga deciding they're going to reset the play. Keep both post players down low and let Chinecki come out, see if she can get into the lane. This is about as big as the Bulls lineup gets with both Menunga and Fankia and the Fanka Mengiato, but instead they go outside and get a big shot by Chineke. I just thought Chineke might drive on that, but she saw some daylight and went up very quick with the shot. Seven point margin. Yeah, Davis not really seeing any help from her teammate, the Temple. Offense very slowed here, a little bit stagnant, not as much movement as we saw in that first half. Shot clock running down. They get it off in time, but they don't draw iron, so that'll be a shot clock violation. It'll be South Florida basketball. Florida coming out very good third quarter so far. They've done a nice job on defense, finally making Temple look a little bit stalled. Extra Temple holding the ball an extra beat, allowing the Bulls defense to recover, to switch when they need to switch. That's that's where Temple needs to start looking at that in the fourth quarter. They can't have their offense stagnate on them. Bulls led by one at the half. Anunga going to work on Davis. Got to be careful of the offensive oh, foul, no, and there is a whistle. Right there. <laughs> we'll see if it's Manunga or Fanka Mengiato. <laughs> It's Menunga, her fourth. Those are those aggressive fouls on the offensive rebound that when Menunga gets in foul trouble, it's from fouls like that. Cairo Wood will go to the free throw line. Freshman out of Buffalo, New York. She averages a little under two points a game on the floor for the first time. Bermejo checks in for the Bulls. And Bermejo will replace Menunga who leaves with those four fouls, also nine points and seven rebounds. I think Coach Fernandez hoping that maybe he can put her in in the fourth quarter. Save her. Don't let her pick up a silly foul here with a minute 19 left to go. Wood is just a 39% free throw shooter. Shot Look there. good on that one, though. Very smooth shot. Surprising. Nicely done. She got them both. Nice, tall-looking freshman there. She's only averaging about eight and a half minutes a game, but still looks really, really confident out on the floor. Not easy to come into a game late third quarter for the very first time and contribute, but she did immediately. This one will be on the Owls, and that may be the third on Davis. 
Davis did a great job avoiding that third foul. She got the second midway through the first half. Nick, a very smart basketball player, saw Davis there instead of pulling up there, drove right at her. Kaneke over Mayo. And the rebound taken by the Owls. Four Deans had a nice game. That's her fifth rebound to go with five assists. She has had a great game. We've seen her drive several times to the hoop. She does a great job at finishing. She's got a nice hesitation, causes her defender to pull up, and then she goes very quickly towards the hoop. Ten points for her. Final minute of the third quarter. Bulls have led by as much as seven. Fanka Mengiato, strong move to the hoop. And with the left hand, what a beautiful baby hook, just laying it up into the hoop. Again, using her off hand, using with that hook shot, some protection, using her body and the hoop for protection from the defender. Shot clock turned off. Davis looking for the last shot, blocked by Fanka Mengiato. Temple bench wanted a foul. No whistle. The Bulls run out of time, but they end the quarter with a defensive stop. The game, the 6th of February against Tulane. Nothing easy when you get into conference play. It does all look very difficult. And then they'll see Temple again at Temple. And then, then that UCF game, which assuming the Bulls do what they, they want to do, Jim, that's going to be a huge game here at the England Center. Well, again, the importance of this game magnified, if you didn't hear earlier, UCF leading the conference at 4-0 lost today on the road against Cincinnati as this will be a foul on Bermejo which kind of opened up everything for Temple at 3 and 0 and USF at 3 and 1 Temple's going to be heading or actually going to be seeing Cincinnati at home following this game so just a very interesting conference season developing for all the teams there's a lot of talent in the American this year it'll be interesting to see if they get the two or maybe even three bids this year from the committee. You saw Bermeo kind of step back and give Davis a three if she wanted it. She passed it up and then missed the two. And the Bulls have the basketball. Pins on slowing it down, trying to let everything get set. They're up five. It's a good time to get a good shot here. Manunga still on the bench with four fouls. Cheneke walks the tightrope, finds Pinzon, but... Unable to connect. Coming back the other way. Mayo drops it in. And Temple back to within three. Pencil, uh, Temple looking here to exert some pressure. Meeting Pinzon a little closer to half court each time Pinzon brings the ball up the court. First points of the day for Mayo. And missed Harvey right there on the backdoor cut. And trying to fight through the screen, they're going to get Mayo on the foul here. Great outlet here. Very little dribbling. Mayo running the floor, going up strong, waiting for her defender to go by, hesitating, and then finishing with the shot. Jim, she's kind of an interesting story. She's a twin. Her sister, though, is actually coaching her this year as a grad assistant. Imani Mayo is a graduate student. Harvey is short with the three. And the rebound taken by Davis. Bulls three out of 12 from behind the arc in this game. That 25% is about where they've been the last few games. That's a number Coach Fernandez would like to see, obviously, get higher and higher. The Bulls this season, they have been up to 61% behind the three-point line in that West Virginia game. They shot, did a great job from behind the line. Williamson scoops up the loose ball and makes it a one-point game. She's a great looking post player. You can see her aggressiveness has led to, I think, while, why she's up at that 15 point average in conference play. Very strong post player. So Temple has narrowed this to one, and the Bulls are going to come back with Menunga at the next dead ball. Fanka Mengiato can't finish, and Williamson the rebound. Those shots have to be finished if the Bulls want to win this game. Jaysha Clinton has a chance for a three-point play. Temple has regained the lead. They've done it on that fast break. They're running their break really well. 
Look at this outlet right here to Gordine and huge bounce pass. Great in motion. She catches her guard, finishes it, goes up, and one. Banca Mengiato now has three fouls as Menunga returns and Clinton to the free throw line. 81% free throw shooter, but leaves that one for USF. Bulls trailing by one. Lots of pressure here on Pinzon up top. They're trying to get USF to run down that shot clock and get a shot they don't want. That's that's a shot USF doesn't want at this point in the game. Inside it goes. Davis working on Menunga. Menunga with the four fouls, and Davis able to cash in. And the Bulls want a timeout. Temple has hit their last four shots from the field. And they've built a three-point lead on South Florida. Where have the points been coming from? Same place they have all night, the big three. Davis, Williamson, Gorgine, they've all been terrific. Accounting right now for 88% of Temple scoring, 42 of their 48 points. Just a great effort by Temple. To the basket, Menunga. And that gets the Bulls back to within one, 11 for Manunga. You see Mia Davis, a little handicapped there, not able to go after Manunga because of her foul difficulty. Manunga playing with four, Davis with three. Here's the same matchup on the other end, and Davis scores off the glass. Uh, Davis just finishes so well. She goes so hard to the hoop. Right now, uh, coming into this quarter, Temple outscoring the Bulls in the paint 32 to 14. Davis now with 19, that's a little over her average. Here's Menunga, double teamed. Guerrero picks up the loose ball. And Temple clears the rebound. Owls by three. Important for the Bulls here to get a defensive stop, keep the Owls from extending this lead at all. Williamson, and nice job by Fanka Mengiato. She's playing with three as well. Janeke couldn't find anything from three, so she takes the two. Janeke looking at the official there. I think she thought there was a little extra contact on that. It forced her to make an off-balance shot. I think she wanted to drive to the hoop but receive some contact. Second bull in double figures. Janeke has 11. Gordine got away with a travel. The three won't fall. And South Florida with a chance to take the lead. Gordine kind of trailing the play here and limping. Cheneke had an open look and a foul on Temple. This is going to be Williamson grabbing Fanka Mengiato. See Gordine kind of hobbling there, trying to ask her teammate if she can uh, get her shoe tied a little tighter. That's an old trick, you know, try and keep your... Keep your ankle steady. Tanya Cardoza saw that too, <laughs> and I yeah. thought she was going to the bench for Gordine, and that's exactly what she does. Tierra East will come in. You see Gordine just kind of hobbling off. Temple doing a nice job shutting down that baseline out of bounds play for the Bulls. Menunga's not able to get that ball off. And they got Williamson again, and that will be her fourth, and this should be free throws for South Florida. A great job by the Bulls going inside, testing the Temple Post players. So now they've got Davis in some foul trouble, and they've got Williamson in some foul trouble. Thank you, Mengiato, nine points, eight rebounds, and two free throws on the way. Still a chance to tie. Is obviously very important for those always are. Bulls are going to need these throughout conference play to fall if they want to win these tight battles. Bulls 9 out of 13 from the line in this game. Quick recovery for Gordine. Top Looks players okay. want to be in when <laughs> the game's on the line. She went out and out and had her shoe tied very tight. Uh, There's the Temple foul trouble. Williamson with four bulls should look to go right at her. It's going to be an interesting matchup again between Williamson and Manunga, both of those players sitting on four. All even with five minutes to go. That'll be a turnover. Williamson takes the extra step. We hope that the bulls will look to go inside here, look to get Williamson out of this game quickly, maybe look at Dulcie, whoever she's on, Dulcie, 
or Betty. All right now she's matched up on Fanka Mengiato. Remember Davis has three as well, so the Bulls can do some damage going inside. Here they go, and the hoop is good to give USF the lead for Franca Mengiatu. Great job by Pinzon letting that play develop, knowing she needed to get that ball into Mengiatu so that she could either score and or get the foul on uh, Williamson. Temple with a two and a half minute scoring drought. Jasha Clinton, nifty move, but too strong off the glass. There's Williamson, and that may be it on Menunga. Those are the fouls, you know, we've talked about on the rebound that Betty Menunga seems to struggle with and has throughout her career at USF. Those quick fouls on the rebound, and it, it comes because she's such an aggressive player. She doesn't want to lose any rebound out there, but, uh, you know, she's needed on the floor. She will depart with 11 points and nine rebounds. Fouling out for the second time this year. She did a great job on Williamson a few times down, but credit Williamson for continuing to go at her, see if she could get her out of the game. Bulls on the other end of the floor need to do that to Williamson. And the spotlight once again on Christina Bermejo, much like it was in the last game against Tulsa. She came through big time then. She is, and she's a player that has had to come in in some critical minutes and provide some critical minutes to this Bulls team, and she's done so. Williamson gets one out of two for her 16th point. And the Bulls with a one-point lead. Pinzon looks again to go right at Dulce. They're keeping Williamson on Dulce. Um, Size-wise, that's probably the right move. It's going to be interesting to see if they're able to get that matchup again. Pinzon looking inside, now gets it to Chineke. Around the screen, boy, another great catch, but Davis ties the play up. It's a held ball. It will go back to South Florida. So the arrow goes to Temple, the basketball to USF. 10 to shoot. That was a great catch by Dolce. You know, difficult pass there by Lena Chinecki when it comes down to Dulce's hips. Trying to get it into Bermejo, and the Bulls turn it over. So back to Temple it goes under four minutes. Bulls need to tighten up the defense here. Dulce needs to watch not to draw this foul on Williamson. Now she's going to be guarding her this time down. Four ties and six lead changes in this game. Gordine a little out of control. And let's see which way this is going. Touch last by the Bulls. Harvey checks in for the Bulls. So an out of bounds play for the Owls. Jose Fernandez shuttling players in and out. Guero departs, as you see, in favor of Sidney Harvey. Doing a nice job at waiting for things to develop, waiting for plays to develop. She's very quick with the basketball. And let's see where the call goes. Is it an offensive foul or a block? It's an offensive foul on Gordine. That'll be her second. She was running out of time on the shot clock, and the Bulls get the foul. And Chineke doing a nice job cutting through the screen, going behind the screen, meeting her player, staying straight up, not leaning over. And Gordine just running her over. Bulls will get the ball into the front court and take a timeout. And again, why this game is so important for both of these teams, all you got to do is look at the scoreboard. Cincinnati defeated previously unbeaten UCF today. Memphis over Houston. It's really tightened up in the standings. That's going to be a foul on Jasha Clinton. For Clinton, her third. Quick, quick fouls for Clinton. Clinton, a very aggressive guard out there. So good job by Chinecki going at her. I think between Menjiadu and Chinecki, the Bulls have an opportunity to really draw these remaining fouls on the Temple players. Chinecki, 90%. 
from the line on the season. That's her 12th point. Two points, South Florida lead. Interesting to see if these kind of missed free throws, uh, the one of twos that are happening for South Florida, if those come back to haunt them at all. Normally each a team, very good team. Each team has missed five free throws. Bermejo poked it away, but Temple recovers. Under three minutes to go. Seven to shoot. Clinton, Harvey. Knocks it away, out of bounds it goes. It'll be a turnover for the Owls, South Florida basketball. A great defensive possession by the Bulls there. Bermejo with the tip away, Harvey with the tip away. So USF with the ball and a two point lead, two and a half to go. Benzon running a little clock. Now Cheneke to the basket, past Williamson, and she hits. Four-point lead for USF. That's where the Bulls want the ball, either with Cheneke or down low in Menjiadu's hands. Here's Clinton. Davis hasn't touched the ball very much in the last couple of sequences. Bermejo has her kind of pinned in the corner. And finally, we're going to see a timeout taken by Temple with 13 on. Point game where really, because of her, the Bulls team wins. Here she is again doing that once again. This is why last season she was an all-tournament player in the American Conference Tournament, and she was a first-team all-conference player. Temple coming out of the timeout. Clinton with two on the shot clock, off the glass and in. Big shot by Jasha Clinton, the freshman out of Virginia Beach. She's got the Owls back to within two. Now that's a huge shot for her, just standing five feet, eight inches, but she has, she averages about 14 and a half points a game. 90 seconds to go. Sydney Harvey, Fanka Mengiato. South Florida by four. Great play there by the Bulls. Good court awareness by Sydney Harvey. Perfect pass to Ben Jadu in stride on the roll. Again, the Bulls really denying inside Bermejo and Davis. Now Davis gets it and a foul call. Then I think they're going to get Franco Mengiato. If so, that would be her fourth. Caught there. Davis doing a nice job keeping control of the basketball. I couldn't tell if she double dribbled there or not, but she did a great job of body control to draw that foul. Davis five out of six from the line. 76% free throw shooter. Her 21st point. Kind of a quiet 21 points, though. You know, she did have that 10 points in the first 10 minutes that she played in the game. But otherwise, it seems very quiet. Less than a minute to go, and Gordeen is going to get a touch foul a long way away from the basket. That's going to be her third. And it's going to put Pinzan on the free throw line with 56 seconds remaining. Not sure that's exactly the play Judge Cardoza wanted. She, she kind of turned around. Kind of a big sigh from her. But the Bulls continue to leave points on the free throw line. Pinzon, one of the shooters you would actually put at the free throw line if you had your choice for the Bulls. One out of two, so it's a three-point margin. Big, big defensive possession and big, just big possession. Harvey knocks the ball away who touched it last it's south florida basketball sydney harvey has not scored in this game but she has come in and made a couple of big really well so far this conference season i think as evidenced by today's game great team really well coached team the bulls though big opportunity here with that ucf loss Bulls line up defensively. Remember, they do have foul trouble with Fanka Mengiato with four. Menunga is already fouled out. Perea back in the game. First time since the first half. And a whistle as they get it inside. 
And did Temple use their last time out? I believe they would already gone. Oh, yeah. Dulcie's important to stay on the floor. It's going to be interesting to see who Coach uh, Fernandez and his staff actually put her on. It looks like she's going to stay on Williamson. So two players with four fouls that are very important to their teams going at each other. Temple inbounds with seven to shoot. Davis oh. makes it a one-point game. And the Bulls take a timeout. Mia Davis with 23. And the Bulls will have Temple let them, but they're not going to let them. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting to see Gordine. I think he's going to really try and prevent Pinzon from getting the ball. Pinzon is probably who you would want on the line, or Chineke. And it's going to be Chineke as Mayo commits the foul, her second. Only a little over one second ran off. Yeah, I was going to say, Chinecki in that Tulsa game did a great job at the line. She was seven of eight. Uh, she's got, she's a great free throw shooter. Somebody the Bulls are not upset to see it. One out of two tonight. And the Bulls have had a few in and outs tonight, Jim, from the line. That is USF's seventh missed free throw of the game. Two-point margin, shot clock turned off. If you're Temple, you want to save yourself time for an offensive rebound if you need it. Here's Clinton. Remember, Davis is not a prolific three-point shooter. She gets it inside, goes to work, ties the game. Bulls have 7.8 to try to break the tie. They take a timeout to move the ball up. To run off of in order to get the ball. Neither team has a timeout oh, remaining. She's gonna take it out. Looks like Chinecki's gonna take it out. So she will try to get it to pins on, we presume. No, it's Fanka Mengiato, now Chinecki. To the basket. Temple with the rebound. Two seconds, Gordeen will not take a shot. And we're going to overtime. All right, Gordine lost track of the time. She certainly had the space. They'll have three. Bulls 28 and 13 all time in overtime, 22 and eight over Jose Fernandez. Last overtime uh, game Bulls played in was in February of last season. Uh, Cincinnati, they won it 69 to 65. Banca Mengiato and Williamson to jump center. And a scramble will have a held ball. I think in overtime you got to re-jump that, right? Yep, because there's no arrows showing on the scorer's table. That means re-jump. Something you don't see very often is a jump ball to another jump ball in overtime. Five seconds elapsed and we'll do it again. And trying to save it as Williamson does a nice job keeping it in play, and Temple starts with a basketball. They're going to keep Bermejo on Mia Davis. I th actually think that's a good call there. She's done a nice job denying Mia Davis. Davis shoots over her. There's Williams, and Bermejo able to knock that ball away, but she's going to be called for a foul. Reaching from behind there. Uh, Benjiadu's got to get Williamson off the board in this over time period, she's got to put a body on her, not just go to the board. They are kind of equal in how they jump and equal in their height. So you've got to put a body on her, back her up, and then go for the rebound. That's the third foul on Bermejo, so you have to be aware of that as well as Williamson rattles the first one home. Williamson doing a nice job this afternoon from the line right now, five for eight. She's got 18, and the Owls by two. Temple trying to stay unbeaten and at the top of the conference. The Bulls trying to get to four and one, which would put them ahead of Temple and tied with UCF. Harvey working on the freshman Clinton, and that'll be a foul on Temple. Clinton will get her fourth. Some foul trouble kind of creeping up for both teams here. Of course, Mengiadu sitting with the four, but now Clinton and Williamson sitting at four. 
credit Williamson here. She's played with four for, I think, an entire fourth period. If I'm not correct. Harvey averaging a little under 10 per game. And again, the free throw woes hurting the Bulls. That's interesting. The front ends uh, seem to be a problem for the Bulls. Her first point of the game. Owls by one. Cordine still limping a little bit, just yes. toughing it out out there, playing a lot of minutes. One minute into overtime. Forced one there, and the Bulls will grab the rebound. Cheneke in traffic, lays it up and in, and the Bulls in transition regain the lead. Oh, what a beautiful shot by Chinecki. Good look by Sydney Harvey to catch her in stride, running down that right lane, and a beautiful finish. Chinecki started out slow. Now she's got 17. Davis, and that's going to be the fourth on Bermejo. He pins on, saving the ball, getting it to Harvey. Harvey racing down the floor. Nice pass. A little air underneath it so Chinecki could run under it, pick it up, and go strong to the hoop. Davis to the free throw line where she is 7 for 8. So the Bulls rapidly running out of defensive options now with Menunga gone, Bermejo with 4, and Mengiato with 4. All tied up. Overtime in Tampa. Temple shooting for their fourth consecutive league win. Fanka Mengiato is blocked by Williamson. Boy, that takes some nerve with four fouls, and she got a clean block. She did get a clean block. Mengiato and Williamson are very similar in their timing and the way they jump. You saw at the start of this overtime, two jump balls because they both kind of jump the same way. Cheneke into the paint, whistles blow. Let's see what happens here. I believe it's going to be before the shot. The Bulls are lobbying for the basket to count, but it is before the shot. That's Cheneke with that beautiful hesitation. She does a nice job getting her defender to stand up and then charging at the defender getting the foul. Sometimes they call that a continuation for her, sometimes not. Third foul on Imani Mayo. Cheneke now three of five from the line. Shooting for her 19th point. South Florida by two. We talked about the Bulls' foul trouble. Temple has some as well. Clinton and Williamson with four, and a host of players, including Davis, with three. Franca Mengiato knocked it away. Bulls come up with a steal. Jim, you talked about guts by Williamson. That is a lot of guts by Mengiato to go after that ball and try and tip it away. She's sitting with four fouls. Two-point lead and the basketball for South Florida. This hasn't been a two-possession game for either team for a while. Franca Mengiato got to be careful of the offensive foul. She hits the turnaround. South Florida by four. That's the finish. That's what Coach Fernandez implores this team to do, finish the shot. She's got 16. Clinton looking inside will settle for Gordine. See, Harvey's been moved on to Mia Davis. Mia Davis working very hard to get open. And Davis trying to get the ball on the baseline through a triple team. That's going to be a travel. Temple turns it over as the Bulls collapsed on Mia Davis. Bulls doing a great job on defense on Mia Davis. She's actually showing a little bit of frustration. We have not seen that yet from her on the floor, but that time very frustrated. She was unable to get the ball. Big possession here with South Florida leading by four. 
because it's overtime, each team has picked up a timeout, so both teams have the ability to stop things if they choose to. Sydney Harvey, Fanka Mengiato, lost the handle. Where's it going? We'll see. Knocked out of bounds by Temple. It'll be South Florida basketball with four on the shot clock. Good catch there by Mengiadu. Comes out, she sets the screen, rolls back to the hoop. Harvey found her on the roll. Good defense, though, by Temple to knock that away. Here's Harvey breaking three to score for USF. Harvey's first hoop of the game. Oh, what a great out-of-bounds play. Temple actually didn't recognize that out-of-bounds play. I'm certain it was on their scout. Harvey coming off a screen wide open for the layup. Six to nothing, South Florida run. Gordine into the paint, the dish off, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Gordine. That will be her fourth, and South Florida will have a chance to run a little more clock here. Oh, actually, she just beat Clinton. Harvey did not use the screen from Dulce. She just beat Clinton to the hoop on a little hesitation. Should be noted, that's Harvey's, Harvey's third charge she's taken this game. So maybe not showing up on the stat sheet, but certainly important to the team. Here's Pinzon trying to stay out of the trap. And a foul call, and this is going to be Davis's fourth. And the Bulls back to the free throw line with a little over one minute to go in overtime. Pinzon struggling a little bit from the free throw line. You know, she was chosen to shoot a couple of technical fouls about three games ago and she missed both of those. Uh, but she's traditionally a solid shooter from the free throw line for the Bulls. Four out of six on the game. Bulls lead is seven with a minute to go. Here's Clinton, the freshman with a three. Oh, big, big shot. shot. Jaysha Clinton, <laughs> clutch for the Owls. Wow, she's hit a couple big shots in this game. That is Temple's first three-pointer of the game. Came at a crucial time. Here's Bermejo crossing midcourt. Cheneke will put the brakes on, and South Florida content to run some clock here. See that Coach Hernandez calling for Cheneke to get the ball, hoping she'll get to the free throw line. And she will. Mayo is going to get called for her fourth foul. So five different Owls have four fouls now. And Cheneke to the free throw line with 36.5 to go. What's been most impressive about the four foul situation is Williamson. The fact that she has been playing on four fouls for quite a while. There's foul trouble and then there's foul trouble. <laughs> That's a lot of it. That's a lot of foul trouble. But they're staying on the floor, right? There's a lot of players that have been playing with four fouls in this game. And playing very aggressively and very effectively. Six-point USF lead. That's what the Bulls need to do. You know, keep the ball in Chenecki's hands. Again, seven for eight in that Tulsa game in a very tight game and doing a good job here. That's going to be the fifth for Bermejo coming over the top. So the Bulls now have had both Menunga and Bermejo foul out. Let's see what Jose Fernandez elects to do here. And Bermejo leaves with two points and one rebound, which shows you how deceptive stats can be sometimes. I agree. She, she made a big contribution. She did. She and Harvey have, have really done a great job on the defensive end. Mia Davis to the free throw line, 26 points, 8 of 10 from the line. One more coming. Didn't get either one. Franca Mengiato able to get it to a guard. Temple lost the opportunity to put her on the free throw line. Instead, it will be Cheneke. Oh, a tough situation for Temple there. Williamson, I think, did not want to foul Dulce for her fifth foul. A lot of people with four fouls, so no one really wanted to foul. Clinton gets called for her fifth. 
and she'll leave with seven points. A really good looking freshman guard for this Temple team. Yeah, quick, not afraid to take the shot, made two big shots in this game. Well, Cheneke now has 52 points across the last two games. 30 in the Tulsa game, 22 so far today. Cheneke had two points at the half, 21 since then. Final 15 seconds, Gordine oh, rolls it in. Nice shot for her. And the Bulls need to get this in play. And Cheneke will get fouled. Cheneke didn't want to put it in play because she wanted to be the one fouled to get to the line. That was the Bulls' game plan. Eventually she had to get it in but got it back. And she'll go right back to the free throw line where she is now 8 of 10 tonight. Yeah, Cheneke, certainly not the oldest player out here, certainly not the one with the most NCAA college experience, but that a very experienced play. Got it into Harvey quickly and then got it back quickly, knowing that Coach Fernandez wants her to have the ball. The foul was on Mayo. That's her fifth. So both teams have had two players foul out. Twenty five for Cheneke. So UCF falls to Cincinnati. The Knights no longer unbeaten in conference play. They're four and one. Temple no longer unbeaten in conference play. They are three and one. And South Florida goes the extra five minutes to knock off Temple 75 to 67. Again, a makeshift lineup because of injury.